Hello, book friends. I'm Addie. You're now watching Books and Tea Time, as you have probably gathered since you clicked on the video. I am so pumped for today's video. This video is going to be my Blackathon 2024 reading vlog. I'm so excited. I did not film any Blackathon content last year. I did participate, but the way that my life was going, I just did not have the bandwidth to record anything. I didn't record anything for most of last year. So this entire video is going to be a week-ish long vlog of my Blackthorn reading. I have finished two books already. I read a book by a Sudanese author and a graphic novel, which were two of the prompts. I am going to talk about them later in the video at some point as just like a wrap-up function, but for the most part I am going to show you the TBR for this video. My goal today is like February 8th I think. I am hoping that by the end of the month on the 29th, because it's a leap year, so we get an extra day, I will have finished at least three more books and started a four. So for those of you quickly before we get in, I should probably tell you what this is about, but Blackathon, my merch, this is the 2023 Blackathon merch. Blackathon is a month-long reading challenge that takes place in February. It is hosted by Jessie at Jessie on YouTube. An actual icon. I love them so much. This is like one of my favorite readathons. It always helps me to personally like with like winter, dark months, you know, I feel like this gives me such a sense of like purpose when entering the difficult time of year as someone who lives like where there's like a winter climate and like you know the sun kind of goes away for a while it just helps me get through that motivates me gives me purpose and i'm one who really struggles with like the made-up construct of like new year and like ending my reading and then starting a new reading year i really get in my head about that and so i feel like usually january is just a hodgepodge of like crazy crap and then when February and Blackathon comes around and I'm like planning my TBR with some intentionality and the prompts in mind, it just, it gets me set for the new year in a way that like, it's almost like February is like the new year for my reading because of Blackathon. The prompts are different every year, but for the most part, it just gives you fun, creative ways to find books on your TBR that maybe aren't on your TBR by Black authors and just reading them and talking about them. That's a very long way of saying welcome to my 2024 Blackathon reading vlog. Anyway, let's get into the TBR. Um, let's start with the two that I've already started and the first one is Changing All-Stars. I started this, I think, late last night or early this morning. I can't really remember and I'm already a little over 100 pages in. This book is already one of the most amazing things that I've ever read in my entire life and it's only 120 pages like I started out just listening to this audibly and then like by like the 10th page I had to go back and start annotating because I just every breath that was uttered I was just like I want to remember that I want to come back to that that is so thought-provoking that writing was amazing like anything of that nature so I have been going through and annotating it while also listening to the audiobook like I literally had the book out open on my desk while I was cleaning and I was listening and then I would pause it and like run over and highlight and put a sticky tab and then unpause it. Like it's been a whole thing, but the audiobook is really good. It's like multi-narrated. It's not like quite a full cast, but there's like two or three narrators so far um, and they are doing an amazing job, but also just like such an engaging read from the first page. And I have so much more to say about this. Do you see that? What the hell? What do you think you're doing? Also, I don't know if you can see this, but he's like pulled my cabinet off the hinges because he's always trying to break into it like a little asshole. Tell the people what you've done. Anyway, lots of, lots, so many thoughts that I'm going to hopefully break down. I think at like the 50% mark, I might do like a sit down update for this one. So that's the first one that I'm in the middle of. And then I'm also in the middle of reading an arc. I know. 
who is she? So now that I'm officially a librarian, I have been requesting ARCs on NetGalley and very generously being gifted them. So one of the ARCs that I'm reading right now is a book that was in my most anticipated releases video, and that is Lost Ark Dreaming by Sugi Davies Okumbawa, who is also the author of Son of the Storm which I mentioned in that video is a book that's on my TBR that I have not read yet. I am in the middle of reading that and it is so freaking good. Lost Ark Dreaming is... I didn't tell you what Changing All Stars is about. I'm sorry. This is a dystopian alternate history set in a like near future America and basically the premise is that there is a program that has been adopted by the prison industrial complex in America um, through which people who have been incarcerated can opt in to participate in this action sports battle situation called Changing All-Stars where they basically fight other people who have been incarcerated to the death. There's so much more that goes into it that we are going to talk about later, but that is the general premise. The premise for Lost Ark Dreaming is, uh, I don't want to give too much away because it is a novella, but I will tell you that the blurb on the back of the book says that it's like Snowpiercer meets The Deep by River Solomon, and that is such a good, those are like two stellar touch points for understanding a little bit about this book. This is also sort of like a post-apocalyptic dystopian story. Basically, the premise is that there has been a second flood in the nature of like, you know, like Noah's in the Ark type flood from the Bible. And it wiped out a large portion of humanity, but there is a tower that is housing a lot of the remaining people that are alive. And like some people live above sea level, some people live below sea level. And there's a lot of like class caste system that goes into like what level you live on and like what job you have and things like that. And I, I literally, I can't say any more other than it is so good and you should just dive right into it. But this comes out in May or June, I think. Those two are the books that I am currently reading and those are like the higher priority books for this reading vlog. And then the last two that I have here where I wanna start these, but I'm not super hyper-focused on finishing these two in this video. Um, these will likely be carryovers into March. The first one is That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon, which these new covers are literally fantastic. I'm obsessed with them. These are romanticy stories. I've heard they're very funny and spicy, and that's all I really need to know. I've just been hearing so many good things about these, especially since, like, you know, they got re-released and more people have been, very rightly so, hearing and screaming about them because they're amazing. Um, I tend to read romance a lot faster than, like, say, a hefty sci-fi story like Chain King All Stars, but also because this is a library book, I'm not um, gonna annotate it, so that'll be also a little faster. And then last but certainly not least, Bloom City. This is another book that I mentioned in my 2024 anticipated releases video. This came out in early January. I mean, look at the cover. I also think I am gonna get the audio for this one as well. The font be hella small. Again, not super high priority to finish in this vlog, but definitely want to start it um, and start chipping away at it because it is a very highly anticipated release. It's blurbed by Cadwell Turnbull. Definitely gonna be getting to that one in this video. It's a very long intro, but welcome to the video. Right now, I'm just gonna get to reading. Hello. Okay, it's officially time for my first check-in. It's a little sooner than I anticipated it was going to be. Um, I just started this video a couple hours ago, but I just finished part one and I am now on part two of Changing All-Stars. And so I feel like this is a good pausing moment for me to kind of brain dump some of my thoughts feelings, reactions to this book so far. So I gave you the basic general synopsis, but 
for the most part so we are following a lot of characters in this which i really like and there are three separate narrators so far that kind of do different voices in different perspectives but you follow a lot of different people um both people that are participating in the cape program which is the name for like the changing all-stars program in which they sort of um they join this hard action sports organization is what they call it so it's like you know they fight in an arena on live tv and people you know can go and spectate it and it's pitched as a hard action sport um by which like i mean people are fighting to the death but it's for the entertainment of the public and if you win you get things called blood points which you can use to purchase things um whether it's like armor weaponry medical attention things of that nature um and so primarily we're following loretta thurwar and hamara hurricane stacks who are two of like these prominent hard action sports changing all-stars fighters in this world and so they are sort of they're on the same chain which basically means that they're on the same team if i had to use a word like that's not really the case but if i had to use a word to describe it so you've got chains where people are sort of grouped together and then people in those chains fight people from other chains in like the weekly matches that are live but anyway we're following those two primarily but we're also following um like this husband and wife who are just like getting into sports and like he's very into hard action sports and so she's trying to like fix their marriage and like it's a very satirical perspective i feel like that adaje brenya is slipping in there we also have spent a little bit of time with someone hendrix young and he was imprisoned and working as a slave in the prison industrial complex and something happens that kind of like motivates him to sign up for the cape program and right now where we are in the timeline loretta is i think two or three fights away from earning her freedom so if you participate in this program for three years and live long enough to be freed you have the potential to you know I guess exonerate yourself via participating um for the entertainment of society so that's just like the general premise i am afraid that nothing i can say is going to adequately explain how brilliant this book is i will say the first thing right off the bat is that adaje brenya is doing so many things and doing them all so well and they're all weaving together so beautifully like not only the perspectives and like how each of them are like tangentially related to each other like the writing is fantastic it's so so alert I, I don't even know how to describe it in certain perspectives the writing can be very poetic and lyrical and then in other perspectives it's almost like whoever's head you're in even though like it's not first person whoever you're following the style of writing and language sort of matches them so like hendrix young is sort of rediscovering his voice and he's using song and like lyricism in that way as you know a uh, a method to make himself heard and free himself and then like when you get to like Stax's perspective you know she is leaning into the idea of love and humor and passion as her way of communicating and showing that she can create and that we can create a different world and kind of like resisting in that method um and then you've got loretta who is and how very like diplomatic she can be about certain things like i don't know it's not feeling like someone else is writing it's still the same author writing but the way that he's able to give everybody such this particular voice is so impressive and i, I just love it so much no one could read this book cover to cover and not be different coming out of reading it you know what i mean like not be radicalized even if it's not you know everybody 
is going to interpret it in a different way. But there's just like no way in my mind that someone can pick this book up and read it cover to cover and not be better in some way because they're questioning things and looking at the world differently. Just like, I mean, obviously the main crux of the story is analyzing the prison industrial complex in America and like even though this is like a dystopian world that is a, sort of an alternate history there are so many things about it that are absolutely true right now. I really enjoy there are a lot of like footnotes at the bottom I don't know if you can see that but some of the footnotes are you know additions to world building but one of them is just a direct quote from the 13th amendment which states that slavery is legal um in the case of people who are incarcerated but it's also just like the idea of hard action sports and you know the way that the celebrity and sports stars in particular but like just like celebrities in general there's so much rich commentary on what information and moments people feel they're entitled to like there are so many moments like outside of the fights where everything that happens while the chains are just like existing together is just live and broadcasted like there's a moment where R loretta is like cherishing this moment that she has walking in a hallway on the way to her fight because it's like one of the few moments where she is not mic'd up where she's not being watched there's no cameras on her and like she's not by herself but like she's by herself in the sense that like she doesn't have to put on this persona and act in a way to gain the favor of the public because like they need sponsorships because the more sponsorships you have the more that you can get for the more like you can use the system to kind of you know find things that make you feel human again and like it's so messed up that that is the world that has to exist but like it's just so unflinching the way that it presents things there's obviously like plot things going on like propelling the narrative forward there's um like sort of like an underlying mystery where like loretta has just discovered that there's going to be a new rule introduced and you know how that is going to change the dynamic but it's also like sort of like a ticking clock because we know that her her final fight is coming up right and she is a leader in this chain and she's trying to sort of like leave a system in place within the system that they cannot control and are victims of she's trying to create a system in which people can survive i feel so many things but in a in it's it's uncomfortable and it's intense and it's making me you know question but like that's absolutely what it's supposed to be doing and i think it's so successful in that i'm gonna get back to reading um i hope that was enough to give you a general idea of where i'm at but i wanted to at least say something while i had thoughts in my head before i forget them so i'm gonna go read some more but thank you for listening to my rambling okay bye one more quick thing that i wanted to say before i get back to reading that is entirely unrelated to anything that has to do with this video is sometimes when I'm in the grocery store, I just get this childlike urge to like purchase things that I ate or drank when I was a child. And it's just like very healing to my inner child. And I wanted to know, A, does that happen to anybody else? Fruit snacks, go-gurts, things of that nature. But this week, today, when I was at the grocery store, I saw Juicy Juice and was just struck with the nostalgic urge to purchase juicy juice so i did i also got um these bad boys i get these a lot this is not like a random thing but go go squeeze <laughs> i know it's basically baby food but i love it so i got the cinnamon apple ones an entire pack of orange juicy juice and that is it that is all and Kilo wants to say hi. Now I'm going to actually go back to reading, but I needed some refreshing moments. So yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> Hello. I just got home from work a little bit ago, and I need to update you very quickly because I am literally about to sit down and finish this book. I have 60 pages left. I must finish it tonight. So I'm making dinner right now, and then we are reading until we're done but i am officially on part three now when i tell you this book has gripped me 
by my brain, my heart, my lungs. Like I'm holding my breath. My heart is pounding. My brain is spinning. This book is just so freaking good. And I'm so happy because I was really like I had high high hopes for this. It was an anticipated five star book and it is absolutely delivering. Again, I still have to finish it. So I'm not gonna decide any rating yet. But when I tell you, my cats woke me up at 630 this morning to feed them breakfast as they do. And typically I like feed them and then I go back to bed until I have to wake up around like 830. But today I stayed up, made myself a cup of coffee and I read this book. And like I value, I treasure my sleep, my rest. I am not a morning person, but when I tell you like I couldn't stop thinking about it. I literally couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make myself some coffee. I'm going to make myself a little breakfast and I am going to read Chanking All Stars until I have to get ready for work. And that's exactly what I did. If you've been thinking about it, do it. There's a reason that you're seeing this book everywhere. Oh, I like, I don't want to speed through it, but I can't stop reading it. You know what I mean? Like when you just, you have to know how it ends, but you want to treasure every moment of it. I am going to make dinner and then read and then I'll be back to update you. Uh, happy Tuesday. Peace out. It is done, folks. I have finished Changing All Stars and look at these tabs. I have finally finished Changing All Stars, the first book on the docket for this reading vlog. And I loved it. It was amazing. The last 60 pages were just as good as the rest of it. The ending I felt was very appropriate and well done. I am still gonna have to sit with this a lot before I have proper coherent thoughts about it for like a sit down wrap up video in the future. But for now, all you need to know is that I freaking loved it. Five out of five stars. And I know it's February and we are not even two full months into the year, but I find it hard to believe that any other book that I read this year is going to beat this one being like my top book of the year. Like top three for sure. Like a shoe in for top three. Read it. That's really all I can say. Um, right now it is late. I finished this and I played a bunch of Baldur's Gate, which has been consuming my life recently. Um, as I got it for the Xbox when it came out on the Xbox. Okay, and now I'm going to go lay in bed and read a little bit more of Lost Ark Dreaming. I think I'm like 38% of the way through that one. So we'll see how much I get done tonight. But I'm not really planning on finishing it or anything just yet. Uh, but that one is a novella. So that one is hopefully going to fly by. Um, and then... We'll see what we pick up after that. Good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Good morning, party people. I am just getting ready for work. Figured while I was getting ready, since I've got like 10 minutes, I would give you like a sort of check-in for where we're at in terms of my progress with the prompts for the reading challenge. And then I'm also gonna give you brief thoughts about the two books that I read off camera earlier in the month so to speak. So Changing All Stars I am going to use to count for the prompt read a book with multiple perspectives. I think it was like two or more POVs and there are quite a few POVs in that book. And then Lost Ark Dreaming which I'm reading right now and I read a little bit yesterday. I am like 40% of the way through that one. Um, but I'm gonna do that one for the Rita 2024 release prompt because it's an arc. Then off camera, one of the prompts was to read a graphic novel. I read Amazon's Abolitionists and Activists by Mickey Kendall. I just flicked concealer somewhere and I don't know where it landed, that's fun. Um, but that one is a non-fiction graphic novel that's sort of like a graphic novel illustrated history of women's rights and it was so good um it's relatively short like i mean all graphic novels tend to be rather short but for the amount of pages like it packed in so much content which i really loved so the sort of setup of the book is that at the very beginning you've got a group 
of young women. They're like a, a college level intro to feminism type course and they're like having some disagreements and then this like computer hologram person sort of comes to life and takes them on a journey through time um, of women's rights and points out um, and highlights a bunch of individual women and the things that they did all over the world and takes you from like very very early long long ago up until pretty much present day um and it's so wonderfully done mickey kendall is the author of hood feminism um for anybody who has seen slash read that book i have and it's amazing i love mickey kendall and that's one of the reasons why i put this on my tbr is because i knew that i wanted to read it and i over the past few years have gotten very into non-fiction graphic novels specifically i think it is such a wonderful and digestible format i have just learned so much and it's so accessible because you've got like the visuals but also like the highlight reel of a specific topic um like i read one called the black panther party and i learned so much about the black panther party that i knew nothing about that i was not taught in school and it just like challenged so many things that we were kind of like incorrectly taught in school about the Black Panthers. It corrected a lot of like misinformation and disinformation, I think, that um, is spread about the Black Panther Party in our education system. Um, so I highly recommend that one if you haven't um, read or heard of it before. So like this is one of the things um, that I've been trying to do is read more nonfiction graphic novels. And this was one of the ones on my list. So I'm really happy to have read it. I learned so many things about so many women that are just absolutely like crucial to the fight for women's rights and the fight for the rights of disabled women, queer women, black women specifically. So I read a library copy of it, but I do eventually want to purchase it because it's just one of those things where like, I feel like I'm constantly going to be going back and referencing these women. And then like, I want to go back and, you know, make note of women that I want to like read more about or like learn more about specifically I cannot remember the artist's name but the art style is fantastic i'll put it on the screen uh, but the other prompt or other book that i read was i read the january children by uh, safia el hilo i think is how you say her name and it was read a book by a sudanese author and so she is a sudanese american author and the january children is a poetry collection about her experience as a sudanese american woman and kind of like the tension between her identity as someone who lives in america and like when she goes back to sudan and has to kind of grapple with like not really belonging in either place but wanting to belong somewhere and that was so moving and powerful, you know, really grappling with that sense of like home, belonging, language, like when you, <laughs> like the idea that like people in America would tell her, oh, I love your accent. But then when she goes back to Sudan, people are, you know, like, oh, you have the, the American tongue, so to speak. So just like even like the idea that you're not at home in a language, knowing two languages, which is so impressive to be bilingual it's so sad to me that someone who can be so skilled as to be bilingual is that having to sacrifice that sense of like a native language you know what i mean i don't know if i'm articulating that well enough i gave amazon's abolitionist and activist a five star and i gave the january children a four star they were both really amazing i will probably say more um if and when i do a wrap-up i'm planning on doing quarterly wrap-ups this year as i said i'm reading lost Ark dreaming right now and then i think i'm also going to start that time i got drunk and saved a demon because i think that would be a nice palate cleanser um before i start womb city that time i got drunk and saved a demon is the one i'm doing for the book talk or bookstagram recommendation prompt womb city i don't even think technically has a prompt i just really want to read it and it's by a black author so that's what we're doing for that one. Okay, I have to go to work now. I'll check in with you guys probably this evening. Okay, I'll check in later. Peace out. Hello, everybody. Okay, it is, what day is it? It's Thursday night. Yes, it's Thursday night. Um, and I finally did not play Baldur's Gate tonight, so I got to get some reading done. And I read the first 100-ish pages of that time I got drunk and saved a demon. And I'm really liking it so far. It's very funny. It's very like unique 
and the way that it blends like fantasy and romance and like almost like contemporary the language is very modern but like it's just like so much its own world and it's very fun and i like it a lot uh, we're following our main character cinnamon who is a spice farmer with her family basically gets drunk one night and accidentally saves a demon and has to go on this quest with him even though she's very much like anti-quest like i don't want to be a heroine i don't want to go on the big adventure i just want to like have my little fun nights out with my friend and drink mead and have a good time and then all of a sudden there's a demon and he needs her help and it's it's really fun it's very cute and flirty and fresh i'm like i'm having a great time things are going well and then all of a sudden when I get to like the 80 or 90 page mark, it's just a scene where suddenly I am just like, wait a minute, time out, time out. I need pause, Kimberly. We need to back up. What just happened? And so it was it was delightful, but if you know, you know, I don't know where it's gonna go. Because it's it's tackling so many tropes, but then it's like subverting them in its own ways, and it's just really fun. Um, so I'm definitely enjoying it a lot. Good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Bye. Hello there, everybody. It has been several days since I have updated you. In fact, it is now March, which means the readathon is over. But I am pleasantly surprised by my success and happy to report that I finished two additional books, which brings us to a total of three books completed for the reading vlog which is really what I wanted to do that was my like realistic goal and like my kind of unrealistic goal was to start a fourth book I updated you when I was about halfway through that time I got drunk and saved a demon and I finished that and I finished Lost Ark Dreaming by Sui Davies Okungbawa so let's let's just talk about them real quick um as like a wrap-up to the video that time i got drunk and saved a demon was so fun i really enjoyed it it's funny it feels very much like reading like D, D fanfic almost it's very fun and like low stakes adventure mixed with like some romance and humor and some spice a lot of spice it's just a very wonderful combination that i think works really well um and i'm definitely going to continue reading the rest of the series. I think the next one is That Time I Got Drunk and Yeeted a Love Potion at a Werewolf. And it follows our main character Cinnamon's best friend and a werewolf that we meet in the first book. Um, and I'm very excited about it. I really think that I'm gonna like that one as well. My one gripe I think with the first one is I wasn't super crazy about the male love interest. And specifically like there's just this one paragraph towards the end of the book that kind of bothered me um it's not really a spoiler but like essentially the male main character who is like a demon and has all this power is like doesn't want to like live in the world with cinnamon where she's like in danger and he's like super like overprotective of her and she says like you have to trust me and he just says i can't and there's just like no acknowledgement of that at all which I wasn't super crazy about. It kind of left me with like a bad taste in my mouth, but overall it was a good book. I would say like 3.75 out of five stars would be my rating for that one. Um, and I'm definitely gonna continue the series. I am fond of Kimberly Lemming's writing um, and her humor and the way that she tells these sort of like, it's like cozy fantasy meets fantasy romance in a very special, way lost art dreaming oh my gosh yes this was an arc that i had i think i brought this up from net galley um it is a novella and it's compared to snowpiercer and the deep by river solomon and that first of all that comparison is so apt and it's just it perfectly captures and gives you a little bit of a taste of what the book is going to be but like because it's so short you don't want to give 
too much in like your synopsis what i will say about this i don't want to give too many details or reactions just because like again it is so short every single page every character's memory their interaction it all is building this post-apocalyptic world while providing like history and like the current economics like socioeconomic class like status situation in this tower it was so good if you are a fan of like climate science fiction or just like science fiction in general but truly fantasy science fiction fans it's also a short novel so if you're like intimidated by science fiction it's definitely not like jargon heavy in my opinion it's very approachable and accessible in that way i think all the characters are very i don't know if i would call them lovable but they're definitely like characters that you want to spend time with like you want to be in their head and kind of like watch them experience the world a fantastic novella and really did exactly what i wanted in the sense that it made me motivated to read more from this author so i'm definitely going to bump son of the storm up on my tbr list lost Ark Dreaming comes out in may so put it on your tbrs pre-order it i definitely want to buy a copy to have on my shelf so that i can maybe reread it and annotate it in the future um but it was fantastic highly recommend i think i gave that one like a 4.5 out of 5 stars that's that i really really glad that i decided to vlog the like latter half of the month because the like accountability of checking in with you all really is the only reason i feel like that i completed my goal of reading three more books this month um which brings me to a total of five books for the readathon i did not get to the group book which i didn't really anticipate that i was going to get to the group book um, and then the only prompt that I did not complete was the read a book with a red, green, and black cover. Um, the book that I was going to read for that was Freshwater by Quake Mezzi. So I'm probably just going to like bump that to my spring TBR. Five books for the readathon is, you know, I'm very happy with that. I quite enjoyed all of them. If you participated in Blackathon, let me know down below what you read and what you thought. If you recommend any of the books that you read. Um, and also if you read any of the books that I read, what you thought kind of get the dialogue going thank you so much for coming to my channel and watching this video it means the world to me i love you all don't forget to like comment and subscribe if that's your jam and i hope to see you in my next video happy reading happy writing and happy living peace